Welcome to the second installment of our DQA video series on how to fix a Stulte U3 air pump. I know I promised uh, everybody that we'd do a drive through menu board ballast the last time we did a video, but uh, unfortunately it's Sunday morning and uh, one of my air pumps is down this morning on the U3 pump. And uh, we're going to fix the air pump this morning because we need to get it up for the business rush on a Sunday. Um, tools you need to get this uh, task done is you need an air pump kit um, from Stolting. It's called an air compressor kit. And the item number is right before you. You can see on the video. And it, the best place to get this is from Stolting Direct. Their phone number is area code 920 894 2293. Again, that's 920 894 2293. And the other tools that you're going to need to complete this task are is a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a reasonably sized vice script, and this looks like a pliers, but this is really called a vice script. This is an important tool for this task. And then you're also going to need the Allen wrench, which is provided with your Stolting U3 pump. Normally this is on the inside cover of your pump in the slot right here. I keep this in the office. I don't like keeping it inside the pump because it can jam the um, apparatus in the pump. So I take mine out and leave it in the office. Um, the first thing you need to do is take your pump off the wall. This video assumes that you know how to take your pump off the wall, disconnect the outtake and the intake on your pump, unplug it from the wall, and then take the wire nuts off your mount. Um, usually you need a flathead screwdriver to get the uh, clamp off of the exit pipe, so that's why I put this in this video. Um, as soon as you have the pump off the wall, um, what you can do is take the front top cover off, and normally there's two screws in the top cover, and those screws can either be a Phillips or a flathead, so you may need either one of these screwdrivers. Now, mine were Phillips, and what I recommend is once you take these screws off this cover, don't put them back in. This cover just rests by itself. I never put the screws back in. So once you take these screws out, I would just discard them and take the cover out. And ideally, put this cover through the dishwasher once you have it out. Um, now this is the inside of our pump apparatus. Right in here is the air pump piston that we're replacing, this section right here. And what we need to do is, th this part right here is the motor. This is the uh, um, compressive switch, or the uh, the kill switch, if you will, this tells the, it's a pressure switch, and it tells the pump when to shut off when the pressure gets so far. I've never had a pump motor fail. I've had pressure switches fail, but the air pump is the most uh, maintenance intensive issue about this pump, this U3 pump. Now the first thing you want to do is take your flathead screwdriver and remove this screw right here uh, from this air filter, and I've already done that, and we're going to take that off and put that on our towel. Then the next thing you want to do is remove this uh, Allen wrench, um, this this Allen wrench piece here. Now you can, unfortunately, it doesn't fit the Allen wrench that comes with the pump. But if you have a smaller Allen wrench, you can use that. What I like to do is just take my vice script and uh, just take that and use that to turn this with, and just do it like that. Or you can use the pliers. Um, so we want to take this little piece of this Allen wrench tightener off. And what happens then is you take that piece off and there's a cap on here and what you want to do is take this cap off and this is where you may need a flathead screwdriver. Get right under near between the uh, square compartment and this cap and push that right off like that. And you're going to put that aside. Then there's also a washer on here you want to take off. And uh, normally this washer comes off a lot easier. All right, now there's going to be four, there's four screws in here that holds the air pump on. And this is where you take the, uh, the Allen wrench uh, T that comes with your pump, and you want to start turning them. Now you want to loosen them first, so we're going to loosen that corner and loosen the second corner. And the fourth corner. While I'm doing that, I'm going to have my cake decorator, Becky, get the uh, pint of ice cream out of the freezer up front, and we're going to show you the difference in what, what kind of ice cream this bad pump is putting out compared to the, uh, the machine with the, uh, where the pump is uh, acting properly or normally, and we'll show you the difference on video here while I'm doing this. Now, pulling these screws out can be a little laborious. Um, it takes a little bit to 
untighten these. And what you want to do is lay all these parts on a towel so you don't lose them. And uh, it's important that you don't lose any of these parts in the process. All right. All right, and here's, here's a video of the ice cream that was coming out of this machine. This yellow, real thick, soft serve was being produced by this pump. This right here is from uh, the machine right next to it um, that, that is working properly. You want to make sure that your machines are always cranking out proper overrun. Um, this yellow product, I basically had to discard everything that was in the barrel because you don't want to be serving that um, to our customers. And all right. Now while I'm getting the rest of these out here, there is an option on the front side here. You can disconnect this hose that goes to the square box here that goes over the pump. Um, I, I usually opt not to disconnect that hose. You can just keep it connected. I don't think it's necessary for this task, but if you want to pull everything apart, that it's your, your option. I just... Uh, I got these plastic clips on here. They're just a pain in the butt to get on and off, and I'd rather just keep them attached and just move this box to the side. Now, we're just going to move this box to the side here and out of the way. Now, there's a little tin plate under here that uh, you have to be careful. It always points towards the pressure switch, and the dot is always on the motor side. So you can't invert this plate. You don't want to invert this plate. You want to make sure that it's always in this position, otherwise the air will not intake and outtake properly. Now sometimes these air pumps you can fix just by cleaning the plate. Um, there's a little bit of dirt and um, build up on the back side of this. However, I do know that this one is worn through, so we're just going to replace this one. We're not going to clean it. And uh, the next task that you want to do is once you have this off, you want to just push the piston up and out. You just grab it right here below the spring. There's a little plate below here. And we're actually going to uh, take back what I said about this. We're going to disconnect this hose here, and we're going to pop this out, actually, and just so you can get a better look at this. Normally, I can do this without. Normally, I can do this without disconnecting the hose, but I just want to have everybody get a better look at this, and uh, we'll disconnect that hose out of there. But what you want to do is to get this out of here. You want to put your fingers under here, push this piston up. Now this is the bad piston or the old piston in there, and what you got to be careful. Like what that happens, it pops right out on you. There's a spring in here that coils in there, and there's also a little ball that's at the bottom of uh, this apparatus. And these are the parts in here. Is what's bad is this this ring that goes in this piston, and this is what puts the pump up and down. And these parts wear. This piston wears, and this ring wears. And that's the part that you have to take out, or those are the bad parts. Now, when you have this all out here, you want to take a rag and uh, you want to take a rag and clean all this uh, area out of here. And uh, you did have my rag here, and uh, sorry, fell off the side here. But you want to just clean this off here, this pull bar, and uh, you know, just dirt and grime just builds up in there over time. All right, so now that we got this wiped out, I just want to make sure there isn't any uh, stuff on the apparatus or the frame here. Now, we want to open up our air compressor kit then. Now we want to put, this, we want to put the pump back together, and first thing you want to do is grab the piston and grab the underarm of, the, of the, the holder for the spring, and this is where the ball goes, and you already put, I already put the steel ball back into the arm here, into the pump. And then what we want to do is put the spring over the piston, and what we want to do is take our vice script and we want to coil the spring. And this can be a little tricky. What I do is I like to coil it and then move it to the edge of the uh, counter and then grab it on the front and bottom side of the holder and take the vice script and lock the vice script in so your spring is coiled like this on the piston. Now we, we, what we want to do is get the piston inside here, inside the frame like this. See that? And then we want the uh, bottom part to hit the ball. And then while you're holding the vice script with this spring, you want to put the piston body with the seal on top. You want to slide that in the top over the piston, um, over the piston coil on top, and push that all the way down. 
and until it's flush with the uh, until it's flush with the uh, um, pump body. Now we didn't quite get this all the way down because the spring is uh, hitting the piston body right here. Now what we want to do, we're going to carefully push the spring back this way. You can see it's hitting the piston right here, and we're gonna we're gonna let the vice grip go while we carefully push the spring over this way so it goes around the piston body like that. And there we go, and we're just going to push the piston body all the way down like that. See now, we have it in there with the spring, and we got the piston body all the way down, and we got the, uh, the seal on top here. Now, you got to make sure that it's resting on top of the ball. There's a little bit of a ball, you know, there's a ball underneath there, and you got to make sure that it catches on the ball, which it did. Now, I've seen professional stilting service technicians struggle to get this spring in for better than part of a half hour. When you use a vice grip, that is a humongous time savings and labor savings, and it's the way to quote unquote cheat um, to, get, uh, to get this piece back together. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to put the new reed valve in. This was our old reed valve, and you definitely don't want to save this. This is all, all basically weathered, worn, and tar. And uh, that reed valve is in, is in pretty bad shape. And uh, what we want to do is put the new reed valve in. And uh, some of the battle is getting this open. Okay, we got our we got our new reed valve, which we pried out of the cardboard. And uh, these things are a little hard to open up. Now remember, when you set this reed valve on here, you want to put it so the air hole, the intake air hole, is, is towards the motor end, and the the little U is facing towards the pressure switch. That's very important. Now before we put our before we put this box back on, there's a little uh, there's a little valve in here that you want to make sure is operational. It's a little air valve, and you just want to push it with a point or a paper clip point or I got a Phillips screw here. You want to make sure that that pushes up and down. If that is if that is really tight or it doesn't come out, you want to push it all the way through to the top. This this is the piece that comes out, and this is what it looks like when it's out and it it, it goes into here. There's also a spring in there. You want to replace that as well. This one doesn't need to be replaced because it's uh, it's still operational. But you can push that all the way out, and then what you do is you put the uh, you put this in first, and then there's a little spring in there, and you put this on top of it, and it locks the spring in, and it all pushes right into the uh, into the intake manifold. But we're just going to put this right through here. We're going to put this right on top of our reed valve, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put um, we're going to put our four Allen wrench nuts back in um, that we took out before and you want to make sure you want to make sure that you tighten them with even force you don't want to just tighten all of them um, on one corner right away it's, it's got to be reasonably even force in all of them um, and you can see there's holes in the frame here to put your Allen wrench through um, to tighten these two here, but normally the frame is far enough away um, that that's not an issue. And what we're going to do, we're almost tightened here, we're going to start to get the Allen wrench back out. Okay, so then what we're going to do once we get down to the point of tightening, we're just going to take our Allen wrench and spin it until, until it's until it's reasonably tight. We're not going to do the final tightening yet. It's important that you tighten with even force because you can you can wreck that reed valve that we just that, that little silver plate that we just put in there. That's an important part of the mechanism. And uh, get all these tight. And uh, the next video we're going to show you how to replace an electrical cord on a bad register monitor and it's the same principle for almost all the equipment and we're also going to do uh, drive through uh, drive through menu board ballast on a future video I'm hoping to get that to get to that sometime this week and then I'm hoping in a couple weeks that we're just going to do a video on general rooftop maintenance um, for air conditioners and uh, our freezers now we tighten all these with even force now what we do is put the cap back on here and what you want to do is be careful, I'm sorry, you want to put the washer uh, first before you put the cap back on. And flip the washer around in case it's uh, buckling or bowing the other way, so you just want to flip it around so it, it bows back. And you want to put your Allen wrench nut back in here um, for this cap on top of the, uh, the square box on this. 
And then you want to take your vice scripts and or you can use a, a smaller Allen wrench if you've got your Allen wrenches available. You just want to tighten this up and again you don't want to over tighten. You just want to make sure it's snug and don't make it so you can't get it off the next time. Now what you want to do is you want to put your air filter back on. This is what filters the air when it intakes and then put the cap for the air filter back on and that is a, that's a flathead screwdriver like this and basically that means that we have the Allen we have the air pump replaced on this U3 pump it's ready to go back on I just slide the uh, I just slide the cover back on I don't put the bolts back in what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in and we're going to show you um, how it works um, you want to check to see what you're checking for you flip the switch on and I don't have power to the outlets, and I just saw a spark. Um, that's not good. <laughs> just a second here. Oh, I disconnected where my my on-off switch connection disconnected here. That's why it didn't go. If you uh, if you look in here, there's there's an uh, there's a connection to the on-off switch. Um, we're going to have to uh, pull this, the, uh, we have to reconnect this uh, connection to the on-off switch in here. You can see there's two connections back here. And uh, we're going to try and get our fingers in there to get that back on. And All right, we used the pliers to get the uh, connection back in there. And uh, it was because I caught the wires on the cap. So we're going to put the cap back on. We're going to give this another try. And what you're going to do, we still don't have power. Yeah. I must have hit the breaker on that one. The breaker tripped because the wire came off, which it should. Now, when the pump is running, you should feel air coming out of this uh, air hook flow. And the best way is just to put your ear right up to it. And if you don't if you don't feel air coming out of there, then you didn't do it right. But I do feel air coming out of there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, reconnect this hose, put the clamp back on here, and then we're going to put this whole thing um, back up on the wall, and it should be operational today. And again, you can see the difference in ice cream that the bad pump was producing the real yellow grainy stuff versus the um, white stuff, which is which is how it should look. So we are going to get this back on the wall in operation today. And uh, if you like this video or if there's another video that you would like to see done on maintenance, um, please give DQOA at dqoa-dqoc.com. Uh, email your request in or call 952-556-5511. Our next video, we're going to repair an electrical cord, which I have down on my drive-through register monitor. So we'll hopefully film that this afternoon. Thank you.